Lesson 7.9, Fractions and Properties of Addition. It's really important that you have seen 7.7, .7, where we learned how to add and subtract mixed numbers, which is linked in the description. We can add fractions with like denominators by using properties of addition and mental math. Commutative property of addition says when the order of two add-ends are changed, the sum is the same. We can add in any order. We can put the two eighths on the outside of the parentheses and move the four eighths into the parentheses. We'll have one and two eighths is equal to one and two eighths. The four eighths plus four eighths makes eight eighths, same numerator and denominator, so it's equal to one whole, and we have the two eighths. For the associative property of addition, when the grouping of the add-ends is changed, the sum is the same. We can move the parentheses to different add-ends. It was around the two-fifths and the one-fifth. We can change it to be around the one-fifth and the four-fifths. That'll make five-fifths. That'll make one whole. That's one and two-fifths. The properties of addition help us to use mental math by adding compatible add-ends first that equal one whole. We have two and one fourth plus one and one fourth plus one and three fourths. We can move this add into the middle and move this one to the back. Then we add these two together because we have a one fourth and a three fourths which equals four fourths. And the two plus one is a three. And three and four fourths is equal to four. We have a fraction with the same numerator and denominator. It equals one whole. We have four plus one and one-fourth, that's five and one-fourth. And if we change the problem a little bit so that we have a two and one-fourth plus a one and three-fourths plus one and three-fourths in parentheses, we can use the associative property to change the grouping so that we add the two and one-fourth and the one and three-fourths together here to get a three and four-fourths. Then we can add a one and three fourths, we get five and three fourths. We have three, four, five, and three fourths. When the numerator and denominator are the same number, the fraction is equal to one whole, like three thirds is equal to one. We can put compatible fractions together first to create whole numbers. We have four and one third plus two and one third plus a one and two-thirds. We change the order of the add-ends. We bring this one to the middle. So the fractions with a sum of one are together. We have a one-third plus a two-thirds. That's three-thirds. We have a four plus a one. That's a five. We have five, six, seven, eight, and one-third. We use the commutative property of addition to change their order to put together fractions that equal one whole. Mr. Lee sold 35 and 1 6 pounds of vegetables on Monday, 21 pounds on Tuesday, and 32 and 5 6 pounds on Wednesday. How many pounds of vegetables did Mr. Lee sell? And we think 1 6 plus 5 6 is equal to one whole. So we can add these first and changing the order of the mixed numbers by using the commutative property. We're going to change the order of these two add-ends so we put the compatible fractions together. And we think now we can use the associative property to group the add-ends that we can add mentally. We have a 1 6 and a 5 6, that's 6 6. We have a 35 and 32, that's 67. And 67 and 66 is equal to 68. Now we can easily add the 21 using mental math. We have two tens and six tens is eight tens, and eight ones and one one is nine ones. We have 89 pounds. And this LBS, this is pounds. It's the abbreviation for pounds in US weight. And the order of operations says to solve inside parentheses first, we learned about that back in Chapter 2, Video 2.12. And if you missed that, it's linked in the description to help you.
we need to circle the property of addition that was used. We have 8 and 2 fourths plus 6 in parentheses plus 2 and 2 fourths. Now the 8 and 2 fourths plus 2 and 2 fourths is in parentheses. And the 6 is on the outside. Which property was used? Did we use the commutative property to change their order? Or did we use the associative property to move the parentheses? We used the commutative property. We changed the order of the 2 and 2 fourths and the 6. And the parentheses stayed around the first two add-ins. Now what about this one? We have 5 and 1 6 plus 2 and 2 6 in parentheses with 1 and 4 6 on the outside. Here, the 5 and 1 6 is on the outside of the parentheses, and the 2 and 2 6 plus 1 and 4 6 is inside the parentheses. Was it the commutative property that changed the order of the add-ins, or was it the associative property that moved the parentheses and grouped the add-ins differently? If you said associative, you're right. The add-ins are still in the same order the parentheses were moved, so it's associative. We need to use mental math to add these mixed numbers. We think, we find if fraction sums will equal one whole. So no paper, we have to do this in our head, we have to use mental math. We look at the 5 eighths and the 3 eighths, we know they have a like denominator, so we add the numerators, 5 plus 3, well that would be 8 eighths, that's one whole. Then we have this one whole and that one whole. We have 1, 2, 3 whole. We have 4 and 3 sevenths plus 4 sevenths. They have the same denominator, so we just add the numerators. 3 plus 4 is 7, that gives us 7 sevenths. We have a 4 and a 7 sevenths. That's 4 and 1 more. That's 5. We see if there are fractions that are equal to 1 whole and we add them first. We need to use properties of addition and mental math to find the sums. We have 1 and 1 seventh plus 1 and 3 sevenths in parentheses plus 2 and 4 sevenths. And we think we add the add-ins whose fractions will equal 1 first. We look at 1 seventh and 3 sevenths, well that would be 4 sevenths. But if we add this 3 sevenths to that 4 sevenths first, we'll have 7 sevenths. We can use the associative property to change the grouping and put the parentheses around these two add-ins. Now we can add the 3 sevenths and 4 sevenths to get 7 sevenths, that's one whole. That's two whole, 3, 4 whole. So now we have 4 and a 1 and 1 sevenths. Using mental math, we have 4, 5, and 1 seventh. Here we have 9 and 6 tenths plus 4 plus 10 and 4 tenths. We add the add-ins whose fractions will equal 1 first. We see 6 tenths and 4 tenths. We should add these two mixed numbers together first because the fractions will make a 10 tenths. So we can change their order. We add these first. We have 6 tenths and 4 tenths. That makes 1 whole. We add it to this 9, we have a 10. Now we have 10 plus 10, that's 20 whole. We have to add 4 whole to it, we have 24 whole. So the commutative and associative properties of addition can help us do mental math when adding fractions. Using the associative property to add, we have 20 and 2 sevenths plus 10 and 3 sevenths in parentheses. Then on the outside of the parentheses, we have plus 30 and 4 sevenths. And we can see this 3 sevenths and this 4 sevenths would make a 7 sevenths. So we change the grouping and move the parentheses around the first two add-ins to be around 
the last two add-ins. We can add 10 plus 30 to get 40, and 3 sevenths plus 4 sevenths to get 7 sevenths, and 40 plus 7 sevenths is a 41. Now we add the 20 and 2 sevenths, we have 61 and 2 sevenths. And we can do that using mental math. Just remember to put your fraction answers into their simplest form if needed. We learned about that in video 6.3 that's linked in the description. But 2 sevenths is okay. It's in its simplest form. On Friday, Mrs. Kim's Bakery sold 2 and 6 twelfths dozen loaves of wheat bread and 1 dozen loaves of cinnamon bread. On Saturday, the bakery sold 3 and 6 twelfths dozen loaves of wheat bread how many loaves of bread did her bakery sell on Friday and Saturday? So we think we need a total of all the loaves, so we're going to add. We have 2 and 6 twelfths plus 1 on Friday. That's the dozens of bread. And we have 3 and 6 twelfths on Saturday. We can use the commutative property to change their order. We see 6 twelfths and 6 twelfths. If we add them together first, we're going to get 12 twelfths. We add the 2 plus the 3, and the 6 twelfths plus the 6 twelfths. That's going to give us a 5 and a 12 twelfths plus that 1 dozen of cinnamon bread. That's going to give us 5, 6, 7 dozen. And remember, we're trying to add dozens of loaves of bread we need to write the word dozen and label our answer. And we can use properties of addition to help us add fractions if one of the add-ins has a different denominator. Look, this has a 4 for a denominator, and so does this one, but this one has an 8 for a denominator. We can change their order with the commutative property. We see a 3 fourths and a 1 fourth. We put this one into the middle. Now, we have a 2 and 3 fourths plus a 3 and 1 fourth. We have a 2 plus 3 plus a 3 fourths plus a 1 fourth. That's going to give us a 5 and a 4 fourths. Then we can add the 1 and 5 eighths. That's going to give us 5, 6 plus the 1 and 5 eighths. That's going to be 7 and 5 eighths. We add the compatible fractions first, the 3 fourth and the 1 fourth. And for this problem, it didn't matter that they had different denominators. We could still add them because these two fractions would create one whole. To add fractions that have unlike denominators, we need to change the fractions to have the same denominator. We need to find equivalent fractions that have the same denominator. You're going to learn more about that in fifth grade. But again, when we have two fractions with the same denominator that will equal one whole, we don't have to worry about changing the denominator to make them equivalent. We can use both properties to add an equation. Here we have 100 and 2 elevenths plus 50 and 4 elevenths plus 109 elevenths in parentheses. We can change the order of these two add-ins using the commutative property. And we can also change the grouping so the parentheses are around the two add-ins up here. We have 100 plus 100, that's 200. We have 2 elevenths plus 9 elevenths, that's 11 elevenths. And then we can add the 50 and 4 elevenths. We have 201 plus 50, that's 251, and the 4 elevenths. We can use mental math to do this. Here we have a costume, and we can see there's an adult long gown and a child's long gown. This is Renaissance dresses. And the Renaissance was during the 1300s, 1400s, and 1500s in Europe. And we can see on this chart that this, this is the Renaissance costume fabric needed in yards. 
So here's the material. We have pink satin, white satin, and gold trim to make this dress. And to make a children's size 7-8, we need 4 and 4 eighths yards of pink satin, 1 and 7 eighths yards of white satin, and 4 eighths yards of gold trim to go around the neck and the sleeves. And it tells us the adult size medium amount of yards needed for those same materials. But our question is, how many yards of material is needed to make the child's costume? So because we're looking at the child's costume, this is unnecessary information. We can ignore this. And we think we need a total of the yards of material for the child's costume, so we're going to need to add these three amounts. We need to add 4 and 4 eighths plus 1 and 7 eighths plus 4 eighths. We can change the order of the add-ins to put the 4 eighths together. That would be using the commutative property, changing the order. Now we have 4 and 4 eighths plus 4 eighths. We can see the 4 eighths plus 4 eighths would make 8 eighths. Now we have 4 plus 8 eighths. That's a 4 plus 1. That's a 5. And we just add the 1 and 7 eighths to it. We have 6 and 7 eighths yards. We have to remember to label the answer to show what was added. It was yards of material. So we have 6 and 7 eighths yards. So remember that you can group together fractions of the add-ins to find the ones that equal one whole and add those first and group them together or change the order of the add-ins. In our next lesson, 7.10, we're going to do word problems that have multi-steps, and these are going to be fraction word problems. I hope I'll see you there. Keep up the good work. Bye.